the field day van that we use for VHF UHF field days here in VK7. There is uh, a few things that we've been wanting to upgrade on this for a little while. One of those we're going to be doing today. It's not the radios, it's not the antennas. Those are working really well. It's something in between. So we're going to be doing some fixes. What are we doing? Well, this is a six meter antenna uh, off our field day van. The Moxon, which we've done a video on this before. We have. This is, this is just for portable operation on the van. Um, and today we're putting some new coax on it. We've got, we've got piles and piles of coax over here. This is all Messi and Poloni coax. So we've got 10 mil, 13 mil, 5 mil, and adding a bit more power, right? Well, not today. Ah, well, eventually. We're making it ready for more power. More power. Less loss. <laughs> <laughs> now, now this is a lovely. Um, Ugly Ballon former that was made. a lovely ugly Ballon. That's an oxymoron. This is the Hyperflex 5. So the idea behind this is it's a little bit more flexible than say RG58. A um, little bit less loss as well. I think this stuff has similar loss to RG213. Okay. Well, to be fair, we only did this as an experiment, um, and then it kind of worked, and we just it just got left on the van. Yeah. This, this is going to be much more be flexible. Permanent. So this is going to be. For six meters, it's got a Mold, stranded strand core. Yeah, multi strand core. So the idea is to replace this stuff, which is yeah, 58 with a little bit less loss, a little bit higher power capability. Now this stuff also has two shields as well. It's got a braided shield, but then it's also got a oh, foil, foil shield as okay. well. Okay, wow. So do we want to? Terminate this with the eyes and then thread the whole thing no, through the no, former. No, this has to go through the former before we put anything on it. So we need to cut, we need to measure a piece about that long. Measure twice, cut once. Well, we're not actually cutting, we just have to rewind it if we get it wrong. Right. So put your finger on that spot there. I'm sure, there's a joke in there somewhere <laughs> that we can't say <laughs> on YouTube. Um, <coughs> we've got some. We got some amperage. <laughs> so this is gonna go in as well. So what's this? 400 watts on 432. 400 watts on 432. I haven't had the lid off it. You haven't? No. So I believe it's got two modules in there because there's, it's got here left amp, right amp. Nice. So I don't quite know what it is, but it's rather heavy. Bit of bit of wattage in the cottage, as they would say. <laughs> And it's got a uh, on the on the back end. Let's have a look. See. Dual fanage. Yeah. End connector. So this was custom built by a, a ham who's unfortunately uh, silent key now. Yeah. But that's the input there. So I don't know whether there's um. So you got input and then you got your output there. And... Yeah, I'm not sure of the switching, but we'll lift the lid off, have a bit of a look. But I think that might be. That's your push that's... to talk. Yeah. And then you've got your power, your AC power. The, uh, the conversation of this came about because we were just uh, on the six meter, not for 432, but on the six meter antenna. We were wondering how far away the center conductor has to be from the braid before the uh, the 400 yeah, watts yeah, decides yeah. to jump over. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose experimenting will, will soon tell us. Yeah. <laughs> if there's smoke, you know that you need to move it a little bit further. 400 watts, the, uh, the, the Yanks would laugh. Ah, it's only QRP. So here's the 23 centimeter antenna. So this is on the little 3D printed standoff. So the pneumatic mast actually goes through the middle here. This is one of the ones from antennas and amplifiers, 36 elements. And then, so that mounts on the top. And then there's a couple of two meter and 70 centimeter um, homebrew Yagis here on the same sort of arrangement. So that then goes on to the top of the mast and it all pumps up. Oh, is that why it was flat? I reckon. Yikes. Someone's got the rev meter going. <laughs> now a lot of viewers, uh, Tricky, are always intrigued by your shirts. I have a special one for the occasion. <laughs> That's not the car that I expected to be revving. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it might have been an accident. I think so, yeah. We've gone the high security uh, <laughs> yeah, talk, just talks head screws. Someone's, yeah. someone's going to flog the. Uh, <laughs> no one will be stealing our phone points. Don't steal the coax with the high, high torques bits. You need the security bit to undo it. Look, to be fair, they were just some 316 stainless steel fittings that I had 
left over. Well, maybe they weren't actually salvaged, I think. Righto, so the six meter antenna has been done and has been all amalgamated up so no water gets in. But this is the last antenna to go on. So we have to, we can't put a connector on there yet. So now we're moving to the next antenna, which is the two and 70. So we've got to desiliconify it and mm. replace it with the 10 mil stuff because this stuff has slightly better specs. Uh, we worked out it's about 0.47 of a dB for 10 meters of cable and you wouldn't have 10 meters going up there, would you, and down and in? No, probably at five. This, oh, from, from this one, it's probably close to seven or... Yeah, so it's going to be less so than the half a dB. The six will probably be maybe about nine or 10. Yeah. So listen, and I think we worked out it was about half a dB for that as well. So clearly you've been trained well on the knife. <laughs> yeah, until the blood starts to run. <laughs> I don't think any uh, water's got in there, which is good. So the uh, original silicon did its job. Good old sellies. No more gaps. No more gaps. I do like using the... So the I use the translucent um, stuff, which is what you've got there, which is the roof and gutter stuff. Yeah, it is, because it's got the non-acetic acid. Yeah, so it's not going to corrode anything inside and cause problems. See, I reckon this antenna would have to be... When did we build these? You, you and I had a bit of a run on building these, didn't we? Must yeah, have been five, 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 five or six, six years, years ago. ago. So this is an LFA antenna. You've got the, uh, the loop here, which is the driven element, and you can um, undo the hose clamps here and adjust the loop in and out here to get a bit of matching and these antennas these are these are really good for VHF oh mate did, did he get you did he did you just flick a spider on him uh pasture did he creep out of the silicon concave what, what, geez mate he's doing living in there he's he's he got embedded in the silicon concave about five years ago and he's just been let free out of his cocoon so I'm just soldering one of the MSM Polony connectors on. This is for the Hyperflex 13. This is the Sahara stuff. So you basically put on the um, clamp connector that screws into the actual connector. There's another ring here, a uh, bit of rubber for the waterproofing. And then all I gotta do now is just, just trim the braid. You can see that there's a little nylon spacer that you put in in here as well and that separates the center conductor solder that on they provide instructions with every connector which is really good so you can just follow through all of these and then just put the connector straight on and away you go what do we got here tricky what's this one this is our 5.7 gig panel so inside of that is a sg labs transverter barefoot so um, two watts on five two point... watts on 5.7 yep um we believe it's set to be horizontal polarity. <laughs> is there um, a um, bit of doubt, is there? Yeah, we, we didn't have very much success with this last time. This is our custom little um, piece of aluminium tube. The drilled and tapped hole with a, with a hand nut so we can just drop down over the little thing on the van. And oh yeah, on the little mask yeah, thing out the back there. We can yep. spin it around and just sort of tighten it up by hand because doing up U-bolts. Yeah, it's not In a fun. few days, not, not cool. And then you've got your cables coming out, so you've got power, you've got PTT, and you've also got IF in. And got IF in, yeah. Yep. yeah. We don't, um, for the field day then, we don't worry about GPS locking. No, no. Because it's, it's just probably moving forward, we probably should, but. Yep. Um, but we were going to look at replacing this with something like a, yeah. a, something with a bit more gain, a bit more directionality. We've come by some uh, some ubiquity rocket dishes, which are a 600 mil yep. um, dish, obviously designed for for 5.7 Wi-Fi. So we're going to try and enlist one of those. Now there's something similar with this as well. So this is for 2.4 gigs. This is for 2.4. And the same thing with a box mounted on the outside. Box mounted on the side with a transverter inside it, with a with a feed line coming out. Yep. Coax and, and then yeah. So we've got some looms that go from the operating position up to the boxes on the roof of the van. Yep. So these these just mate with those with those looms that are in there. Yep. And then everything once it's all set up in there, and you've got another one of these as well, so you can just slot it straight on. Yeah, correct. Cables cable for days, mate. That's all good. It's nice. I'm loving that cable. Yeah, very flexible. That's the hyperflex too. That's not the. That's not the super flex stuff, but this oh. is this would be perfect for around rotators um, yeah. and also for 
round tight bends and stuff like that because the bend radius of that's a lot more than the the other stuff murray's uh tightening up all the antennas now they've all got the coaxes on them and we're running it out trim it to the right length get some trimmage going and then then we'll be good and we got a little bit distracted didn't we we did get distracted we st started doing another job ended up putting a uh was this like a cr 8900 antenna here on the front for a uh, FT8900. We're just running the power cable and um, it was stuck down in the firewall in there. Murray's just organizing his erection. <laughs> All the innuendo jokes. All the innuendo. connector so the other connectors which these have been sitting out in the sun so they're very hot is uh, they've got these heat sinks which are on the back so what you do is you undo the back of the connector here which has all the special bits inside that you don't want to lose and what you do is you screw on the heat sink onto the back of the connector like this and this is for amplifiers so you plug this into the back of your radio or your amplifier and it stops your coax cable from heating up um, because of the heat that's provided by the, uh, you know, the amp or the radio, and then deforming the cable. Um, dielectric can break down, all that sort of thing. If you actually have a look on Messi and Polony's website, they've got a nice detailed thing about why they actually use these. Now, I've been using Messi and Polony cable and the connectors for quite a while. I really like them, the design of them. They're really easy to solder up and put together. Now, if you want, there is a link in the description below which gives you a discount on your um, messy and plony orders so have a look below for that um, there's a coupon code that you can use too so mr hayden what yeah. do you got on the go here uh, what am i what, is, what am i doing You're just tightening up your nuts I, I am i am just tightening up my nuts it's a nice looking bit of right angle connector you've got there mate so this is the right angle so because the 23 centimeter antenna has got a end connector that pops out the top we thought that it would be better to pop that on Yep. rather than you know having it sort of ah, that's like this. fantastic idea so this is the same sort of connector but instead you just solder the center pin right there in the middle ah right yep, yep put the little cap on the top so um this so yeah the right angle should we still amalgate just... you think well possibly we were just talking about how long outside um we're going to have this probably not too long it does have the o-rings in here so yep. that the water can't run back down the cable I was just thinking about this little... Whether that little cap is actually sealed. Whether that cap is sealed or not. Yeah. What you could actually probably end up doing is in the longer term, because we know how much you love silicon, Tricky. <laughs> you probably could come in here and you probably could bog all that up with silicon and then put the cap on. I don't then... even know whether you'd need to bog all that up. Maybe if you just put a, an ever so slight amount around the thread so when you, mm. when you screwed the cap in... Yeah. It's sort of basically sealed. Because there's no actual O-ring or anything like that for that particular bit um, to stop the water from getting in. So, yeah. And yeah. because it's... I'm not sure how we mount the Yagi. I think the connector's on top, so it means that you are going to have Correct, Because yeah. if you had it upside down like that, you wouldn't do I it. I don't you think it'd be bother. a problem. Same as I think normally those connectors are designed, obviously, to mount on, on front panel mounting things. Yeah. So you're not likely to get too much water in there. So No. So we've terminated all the connectors, so they're all... Ready to go. Good work. Let's get it up there. Let's let's. The last one or second last one? Second might be second last one. Okay. I can't remember. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go, man. Do we want to put heat shrink on Can it? Put or... heat shrink on that. Yeah. Oh, that is the heat gun. Man, let me get it in the shop. Get it in the shop. The heat shrink too looks like it's going to shrink down. Good shrinkage. Shrinkage. You don't want shrinkage. Is that glue? Is that glue? I think it is glue lined, yeah. Squish, squish, squish. Look at that. That's that's like a that's like a professional bought one. Just like a ball one. There you go. There you are. Just send it to the up, 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 upstream management. <laughs> the uplink. <laughs> so Muzz is just getting the V and A on here to do a sweep of the antennas to make sure that there's no shorts or anything in the coax, and I think we're done.
So if you want to learn more about the field day van, then there's a couple of videos up here that will appear right over where Murray's head is. <laughs> and it'll show you exactly what all the fuss is about.